So today we're continuing our previous lecture on the mediastinum and we're going to continue by reviewing the contents of each of the mediastinal spaces that we talked about uh, in the previous lecture. And we're going to start by reviewing the contents of the superior mediastinum. So as you can see here, we have removed the right lung to expose the mediastinum. And the superior mediastinum, as you remember, is located above the transverse thoracic plane. And in general, in this specimen, everything above the heart covered by the pericardium could be considered the superior mediastinum. There are some very important structures in the superior mediastinum that you can see here, for example, the superior vena cava, um, both of the brachiocephalic veins. Uh, we can also see the arch of the aorta coming out of the uh, of the left ventricle. We can also see the trachea and right behind the trachea we see the esophagus here. And here in the green you can see the thoracic duct which is the biggest uh, lymphatic, uh, lymphatic duct uh, of the human body. And here you can see how it trains into the venous system uh, here in the angle between the left internal jugular vein and the uh, left subclavian vein. Uh, here you can see the right and left brachiocephalic veins and these veins are both on both sides formed by the subclavian and internal jugular veins. So you can see right subclavian vein, right internal jugular coming up, uh, coming together to form the right brachiocephalic vein. And the same goes on the opposite side here where you can see the left subclavian vein and the left internal jugular vein. Both of these veins also come together to form the left brachiocephalic vein. And here you can see the left and right brachiocephalic veins coming together right in front of the arch of the aorta to form the superior vena cava, which is one of the two uh, largest uh, veins of the human body. And the superior vena cava uh, receives blood, venous blood, so blood with uh, deoxygenated blood uh, from head and neck, including the brain and the upper, uh, upper extremities. And as I mentioned earlier, here in the superior mediastinum, we can also see the aorta. And to be exact, we see the arch of the aorta and partly the ascending aorta. So in short, the aorta comes out of the left ventricle as the ascending aorta. It ascends for a little while and then it arches posteriorly. And this part where the aorta is bending posteriorly is called the arch of the aorta. And the arch of the aorta is, gives off three very important branches, and these are the brachiocephalic trunk, left common carotid artery, and the left subclavian artery. Uh, please note that we don't see a right common carotid artery coming off the aorta, and that is because the right common carotid artery and the right subclavian artery comes off the brachiocephalic trunk. That's really and one more structure that we must review in the context of superior mediastinum is the trachea, a short and flexible air tube extending all the way from the larynx down to the middle of thoracic cavity. And at the level of approximately fifth thoracic vertebrae, the trachea divides into the left and right bronchus. So these are the two main bronchi of the human body. And this point where the trachea divides is called the bifurcation of trachea. And if we look inside the trachea, here from the superior aspect, we see that at the point of the bifurcation, we see this little ridge, and this is called the carina of the trachea. If we zoom out a little bit, we can see that the right bronchus is actually oriented a little bit more vertical compared to the left bronchus. And due to this fact, um, foreign bodies tend to get stuck more often in the right bronchus or in the right lung. And another thing about the trachea that we must know is that it, the trachea is composed of approximately 15 to 20 C-shaped cartilages. Uh, and the posterior part of these cartilages, uh, cartilage rings, are made of a muscle of, and connective tissue. As you can see here, we see a membrane here. 
Here in the superior mediastinum, we can also see some structures belonging to the nervous system. And these are the left vagus nerve and the right vagus nerve. And also we can see the right and left phrenic nerve color coded in purple. Uh, you must know the difference that the phrenic nerve are coming off the spinal cord at the segments of C3 to C5 directly, whereas the vagus nerves are considered to be cranial nerves, meaning that they um, originate from the brainstem. Here in the midline, you can see two branches of the vagus nerve. We see the right recurrent laryngeal nerve and the left recurrent laryngeal nerve. And there is a difference between the right and left recurrent laryngeal nerve pathways. So the right recurrent laryngeal nerves nerve comes off a little bit higher and the left recurrent laryngeal nerve uh, comes off the vagus a little bit lower and it wraps around the arch of the aorta uh, behind the ligamentum arteriosum and then both of these nerves ascend upwards on the trachea and usually actually in the trachea is a fagial groove. As I mentioned, the right phrenic nerve and left phrenic nerve uh, originate from the spinal segments of C3 and C5, and these are very important nerves uh, because they innervate the diaphragm, so they provide the motor innervation, and they are actually um, a somatic nerve, so they are not part of the autonomic nervous system. Um, you can see that the phrenic nerves are uh, located uh, more anterior than the vagus nerves and they also wrap around the heart and afterwards they branch uh, on the diaphragm.